Now, the first step of throwing the spin hook kick is obviously the spin. When we throw our spin, we want to make sure we stay on the ball of our foot and we bring it all the way around 360 degrees back to where we started with our spin hook kick. Learning to do this is important. A lot of times when people first learn how to spin, they'll kind of shift their weight forward too much and step forward. You want to make sure you keep your weight back, keep your weight right over the center leg here, your front leg, your pivoting leg, spin and come all the way back into your fighting position. This is going to help you execute an excellent spin hook kick and stay balanced while you kick. Now, the next step to throwing your spin hook kick is the actual technique and chambering of the kick. As we come from this position here, we will turn one to the rear, two, bring our foot up to our knee, similar to a back kick in this position. Then on number three, we're going to turn up and we're going to make sure we keep our foot in front of our knee. This is extremely important. Our heel should be a little bit above our knee, kind of coming up into this motion as I turn, keep my eyes on my target, snap through, and back into my position. One thing that one mistake that I see a lot of people do when they're throwing their spin hook kick is as they turn, they lead with that knee, and that knee gets in front of the foot and they're kind of twisted like this at this point then they end up throwing like a turning crescent kick when throwing the spin hook kick we're going to turn on number one number two bring our foot to our knee getting our eyes on our target as quickly as possible bam coming through with our hook and back into our fighting position it's important after we throw our kick that we don't land forward like this here if we miss with the kick or we don't have a strong kick, this is going to lead us to shift a lot of weight onto our front leg and possibly get hit with a strong counterattack. We want to make sure that after we throw our spin hook kick, we're back into our position where we can continue to kick from there. All of our kicks should have our knees bent when we're in fighting stance, but even more so when we throw our spin hook kick. Having your knees bent allows you to explode as you rotate and come up with your kick. Having those knees bent and exploding up really gives us the power that we want through our spin hook kick. Now, the last part about a spin hook kick is our attack angle. Kind of like the attack angle of a roundhouse kick, we can change the attack angle of our spin hook kick. I can have a really steep attack angle, boom, coming straight up. I can have a really wide attack angle coming way around the outside. But for the most part, we want to have that attack angle coming right up inside the arms. Imagine your opponent looking at you and turning their body forward and getting that arm inside, right inside the blocking arm and coming up to the jaw. That's where we want to be hitting. Now with the spin hook kick, we want to be reaching out with our toes, getting as much distance as possible and reaching out. There's no need to kick super, super high if our opponent is only right here. Now if your opponent's 6'6", you may have to reach up there. But if your opponents say your height, they're gonna be a little taller, you're not gonna have to reach super high. You're just gonna have to reach out, get your spin hook kick there, and back into your position. Now, the next common thing that people will say about doing a spin hook kick is you need to drop your head or get your shoulder down low when you throw your spin hook kick. And honestly, when I first learned how to do a spin hook kick when I was a young kid, I learned how to kind of do it two different ways. I learned how to do my spin hook kick normal with my back up nice and strong, or I learned how to do my head down low, boom, and coming around. Now, dropping your head sometimes can be useful when you are having an attack with an axe kick. Someone's throwing the axe kick, you want to drop down low, make sure your head doesn't get struck by the axe kick. It can help a little bit. But in recent days, with a little rules changes in Olympic Taekwondo, specifically the one where you fall down and you, you, your opponent gets a point, um, dropping your head isn't always the best place because when your head's dropped down and someone bumps into you, it's very easy to fall. Um, back in the 90s, people would throw that spin hook kick, hits the head, fall down, and, and score that point without any, without any problem. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have any points against them or anything like that. And nowadays when you fall, you definitely get a point against you. And I recommend you keep your back straight. You don't get a huge benefit from dropping your head. Um, most people who are su sufficiently flexible can do their spin hook kick with their back completely straight, turning, and coming right back into their position. Now, um, if you do, if your flexibility isn't quite there, you need to drop your head a little bit, that's okay, but I would recommend you just get a little more flexible and that will help that situation as well. The next problem that a lot of people have with their spin hook kick is spinning on the heel of their foot. Spinning on this part of their foot right here as they come around. Um, I, it's hard for me to spin on the heel of my foot. I've spun on the ball of my foot my entire life 
and it's um, very difficult. Uh, when you spin on the heel of your foot, you're gonna lose your balance very quickly. There's a lot of people that may not start spinning on the heel of their foot, but they'll rotate, and as they rotate, they get onto that heel, and they lose their balance at the end of the kick. So if you're losing your balance at the end of your kick, it's most likely because you're rotating onto the heel of your foot, and maybe you need to slow it down, and just practice doing your spin on the ball. Spinning on the ball and staying balanced throughout that spin. Then executing your kick a little more. The spin hook kick is one of those kicks that benefit greatly from breaking the kick down into steps. Learning to spin correctly, learning to hook correctly, and then putting those things together and learning to throw your spin hook kick out of full speed. I hope this helps with your spin hook kick. Practice, practice, practice.